What is going on YouTube? My name is Chris and today I'm going to show you how to build a battery for your Razer Dirt Quad. Now you see here I have my Dirt Quad in front of me. This is the original 350 watt Dirt Quad. It's not the bigger 500 watt. You can tell by the front end here it's got the smaller bumper bash bar. But this thing right here comes at 24 volts and we're going to be souping up to a 36 volt system today. I already know that 36 volt works because I already went and powered this quad by a cobalt battery which is 36 volts and this thing is a ton of fun to ride. So we're gonna be making a custom enclosure. We're using recycled cells, a battery that's gonna power this thing and have a lot more range than the original. And I'm gonna show you guys that entire process so you guys can get inspired to do this yourself at home. So let's go ahead now and get right to work. So to build our battery, we're gonna need a few things like you can see I have on the table here. The most important thing you're going to need is your battery cells themselves. And what I have are some 18650s. These are actually LG MH1 cells and they were pulled from recycled scooter packs. I actually have a completely separate video where I start showing you guys some of that process. But recycled cells are a great option when you're building a battery if you get them from the right source. You want something that doesn't have a lot of use on it and that way it's got its full capacity and it's not going to have reduced lifetime when you go and put it in a second battery. So besides the batteries themselves, you'll see a few tools here on the table as well as a BMS system. This is going to be really integral to the battery and you don't want to cheap out on one of these. I like to go with the Dolly BMS systems. For some reason, they've been really reliable so far for me. And this one actually has a temperature sensor, which is a great safety precaution. Right here are the balance leads, which are going to individually balance the cell groups of our battery. We'll talk about that later. Over here, we've got some nickel strip, which is going to connect all the batteries together. We've got some extra insulating rings, as well as battery wraps, just in case any of our recycled cells are damaged. And then right here, we have our battery spot welder. This is something I found on Amazon. It's a little bit of a smaller underpowered unit, but for what kind of batteries I like to build which are a little bit on the underpowered side this is a great affordable budget welder also you can see I have a soldering iron right here that's going to be for soldering these balance leads onto the nickel strips and finally you'll see these pieces of plastic here these are 18650 battery cell holders you can either 3d print them or you can buy them on Amazon. Both are really cheap options. Probably be a little bit cheaper to buy them on Amazon, honestly. But I like to 3D print them myself because it helps me get the exact battery dimensions that I'm looking for. I can build whatever configuration I want. And also having the cell holders gives a little bit of a gap between each battery, which is a little safer and helps with the ventilation and keeping all these cells cool. Now, one cool part about this project is that we're gonna be building the battery to fit where the factory one lays. These are the two 12 volt batteries that power the dirt quad. Originally, one of them is bad, one of them is good. I'm gonna be keeping around to use kind of like a power supply. But you can see that they have this bracket here which straps down the batteries to the frame of the dirt quad. And my plan is to reuse that strap on our new battery. But as you can see, there's a lot more energy density in lithium batteries than there are in the traditional lead acid batteries. So that means that besides our regular cell holders and our BMS system and our batteries all together, it's still gonna be smaller than the batteries themselves. So I'm actually printing a battery box which is gonna contain this whole thing. Again, this is a cool advantage of having a 3D printer. If you don't have one, you can always get things 3D printed through a friend or through some online or local services. But I'm gonna 3D print this box to be the exact same dimensions as our two batteries together here. That way we can strap it down safely and we won't have to worry about this fitting into the quad. We already know it's gonna fit. So now as we can see, all the parallel groups are connected by the nickel strips and you'll see that some of my spot welds are not the prettiest, they're not super uniform, but this is again not a super high performing pack and these welds should work just as well as any. So we're gonna go ahead now and we can connect our series connections 
which is going to go from our first parallel group all the way to the last one using these little smaller strips here. And we're gonna double stack them since these aren't very thick and they can't carry a lot of amps. And our welder is not equipped to weld anything that's thicker than this. So to work around that, you can go ahead and double stack your nickel strips where needed. You can even triple stack, which we'll probably end up doing on the pyramid configuration at the rear here. And the only downside here is that you're adding a little bit of extra weight to your battery pack. It's not necessarily a bad thing to double stack nickel strips because these are rated for about seven amps of load. So you double those up, you've got 14 amps, and then you triple that up against your series groups and you've got about 52 amps that we can pull through these connections. And that's more than what these batteries are rated. Also, I just wanna show you guys, meanwhile, we're building this battery pack here. My 3D printed box is coming along great. I've got this really nice purple plastic we're gonna use for it. And it should take about nine hours plus the lid. So probably this won't be done until tomorrow, but let's go ahead and finish this battery pack so we can have it ready once this is done printing. <laughs> All right, now we've got almost all of our series connections done. We just need to reinforce the output sides of the battery, which is where we're gonna connect our BMS and our XT60 connector. And then we're gonna do this pyramid style series connection at the back here, which I wanna show you guys. Finally, we're done installing all the nickel strips, as you can see, and on the sides here, I went and installed a little bit of extra nickel strip dangling off so that we can wire our balance leads without putting them like on the top or sides. Now, before we install our BMS, we wanna make sure that our battery is set up correctly. So we go ahead and get our multimeter out. We can test our voltage here. And we've got that 41.3 volts, just like I estimated that we'd have in the beginning. So we know our battery is good. And now we can go ahead and install our BMS. So we've got our battery almost fully assembled here. And as you can see, I've even got the XT60 connector on. And I've actually learned a lot since my past few battery builds, especially in terms of wire management. You can see this is a lot more pretty and you also reduce the chances of any of your balance leads coming into contact with something that could cause a short circuit in the battery. I will say that I probably need a more powerful soldering iron because these solder points are not super pretty for the wires onto the nickel strip. But besides that, I think that this is gonna be a good battery. The only next steps that we're gonna do is wrap the battery up with a little bit of Clapton tape to make sure nothing moves around. And then we'll also use some fish paper here to cover the battery, make sure that nothing can uh, possibly short circuit these groups of cells. Then we're going to shrink wrap it and then we'll install it in our box. I already have the lower portion of the box right here. You can see it fits in beautifully. Just want to add some foam padding on the sides and uh, cushioning to make sure that the battery is safe in there. And also we have our lid up here, which is almost done. So I can't wait to assemble the battery and show you guys the final result. But let's go ahead and finish wrapping this thing up and making sure that it's safe to use.
are all done with our shrink wrap. I did about four layers of that shrink wrap around this battery just to make sure that nothing moves inside of there. And also it keeps out moisture as well. But you can see we do have a little bit of a gap where moisture can come in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this battery inside of my battery box now. But at this point, this is a fully usable battery. A lot of them are made with just a little bit of fish paper, maybe some fiberglass sheets, and then shrink wrap just like this. So if you have a safe place to put this inside of your e-bike or whatever project you're working on, you could go ahead and install it. But for added safety, we're gonna put this inside of an enclosure to keep even more of the moisture out and also protect it from any impacts. My lid is all finished printing. Let's see if I can get it off with one hand, there we are, beautiful. We're gonna put the battery in here, in that orientation, and I also have some foam here that we're gonna use to pad the sides of it so that there's a little bit of dampening for when we're hitting bumps and popping wheelies and stuff. So let me go ahead and pack this battery up and then we'll be testing it out in no time. Alright, fully assembled, moment of truth, beautiful, beautiful fitment. All we gotta do now is put this battery inside of our razor. It should fit just like the lead acid cells that we took out and bolt in using the factory bracket. We've got our connector here. We could probably fill this hole with a little bit of hot glue if we wanted to fill the gaps here and make sure this battery stays watertight, well, water resistant to some degree, but let's go ahead and test fit it and get it installed. Alrighty, this thing is a blast to ride. Just popping wheelies around the front yard, and you know, it doesn't matter. Going eight, nine miles an hour around the neighborhood, it's still super fun to ride. And I love seeing this big purple battery strapped down. I haven't put the cases back on, but they should fit just the same as before because again, we haven't made any changes as far as adding things inside the, uh, the compartment there. And the other thing that we have to make a note of is that we have this charging port right here. We probably wanna go ahead and cut off the connector for this and hook it up to a 36 volt charger and label this thing as a 36 volt so that nobody gets confused in the future. Besides that, I would probably also consider adding like a voltmeter right here because the one that's on the handlebars here, that's made for 24 volts. So technically, even when the battery's dead, it's not gonna show this as having a low battery. So that's kind of useless, but again, this thing is nine almost 10 amp hours so it's not going to run out very quickly and if it does you'll know because it's not going to go anywhere you just need to plug it back into charge otherwise this thing is just so much fun to ride and that battery is performing really well so far all right so that's going to conclude our video and i hope that you guys enjoyed watching if you did be sure to leave a like or a comment down below and check out the description of this video if you want a link to the stl file for the battery box that i designed for the quad razor that way you can design your own battery and put it inside the box and have it mounted up. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to subscribe if you want more videos like this. And as always, I hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll see you next time.